Hello everyone and welcome back to Towergate. It is Towergate day number 1077, 1077, March 19th, 2020, Thursday. Thank you so much for tuning in. Alrighty, so um, the last two days, of course, I've been talking about this, uh, this case, which should be a major, major news story. Uh, and I'm speaking about um, Uncle Bob the Executioner and now the Department of Justice uh, deciding uh, not to continue uh, with this prosecution of the Russian trolls uh, in the case, of course, uh, being pursued against Concord Management. Now, of course, coronavirus is dominating the news headlines. It's, it's the only thing uh, that the major uh, corporate media is talking about, and I can pretty much understand that. But this was a major deal. This was a major deal because this was the case that Uncle Bob the Executioner was using to justify the narrative that um, the Russians interfered in the 2016 election. So now that the Department of Justice has had to pull back and put an end to it before the case can go to trial, where they would be made to look like absolute fools, nobody in the media wants to talk about it, especially Rachel Madcow. It was Madcow who literally spent weeks and weeks, if not months, maybe years, constantly talking about this case and trying to make the case that it was these Russian trolls at the troll farm that uh, cheated and cost Hillary the election. Now, I haven't checked in with Mad Cow recently, but I can guarantee you that you're not going to hear a peep out of Mad Cow. So, I've been drilling down on this, and I want to touch on one more thing uh, today and probably uh, put this to bed. But I guess I just find it very interesting, the timing of this. Uh, obviously, if this would have come out, if they would have come out and decided to not pursue this, this case against the Russian trolls any further, a month ago, before coronavirus, it would have been probably a fairly major headline story. People would have been talking about it. But they decide to do this knowing good and well it's a, it's a headline news type story, knowing good and well it would be buried uh, in the coronavirus uh, story, which is dominating everything in the news. So it's the uh, timing that I'm questioning here because the case was going to go to trial, but it was still, I think, a month and a half or two months away from the trial. And I think that um, they probably would have continued to delay. I think that they would continue to delay this to probably uh, beyond the 2020 election, that would be my guess, if they could. Um, or maybe hope that they stumble onto something else that they can throw into the mix to uh, drag it out some more. But they really didn't want to come out and have to admit uh, or have to back off this case because they, they know that it was the one of the, the really the centerpiece, one of the three centerpieces of the entire Russia collusion narrative. And uh, the first piece of that uh, narrative already went down with the Trump Russia collusion. Horowitz report pretty much put that to bed. Uh, and then, of course, this, the Russian troll farm, uh, was what they were using to say that uh, the Russians were interfering in the election and may have flipped the election. It's what the rotten Reverend Clinton has really been relying on uh, to create this uh, sort of, um, I, let's just say narrative, to create this narrative that she was cheated. This is, uh, this is what she's been relying on, is the Russian troll farm. So I just think it's awfully peculiar, strange, uh, coincidental uh, that they would choose to uh, put the kibosh and pull back. The Department of Justice would decide not to go to trial with the Russian trolls at this particular time. It was a very good move on their part because it worked. Uh, they were able to pull back on this case, which is a big deal. I mean, it was, it was, it was the big, big deal uh, three years ago, I mean, this was the shit. I mean, this was the, this was the deal. 
this was the, the Russian trolls who, 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 who caused the election to swing to Trump and away from Hillary. And maybe were they cooperating with, uh, was Michael Cohen involved? Uh, was Carter Page involved? Uh, were they working with the Russians on this? And uh, is that what they were talking about at Trump Tower? And I mean, it was, the conspiracy theories around this was just extraordinary. And, and Uncle Bob, the executioner, used it to propel his investigation and to justify his investigation in a lot of regards. Because there was really no Trump Russia evidence. That's what they were kind of looking for. And um, it was really the Russian trolls and the DNC uh, emails being hacked. That was really the two pillars uh, that were kind of justifying the narrative of the Russians being involved and having something to do in the elections. And uh, really a big part of what they used to justify Mueller's investigation. And so it is a big deal. It was a big, big deal three years ago. Now, not so much. But the fact that they have finally uh, decided to pull back and not go forward with trial and withdraw their, their charges against Concord Management, the Russian trolls and the troll farm, um, you know, it's a big deal. And uh, it's, it's nowhere in the media. And, of course, I think that this is no accident. I think that they saw the opportunity and they said, hey, this is going to be very embarrassing. We're going to look like damn fools. We cannot let this go to trial unless they can pull something out of our butt. And I don't think there's anything left. Uh, this whole thing's falling apart. Uh, we can't go forward. And now would be a very good time uh, to put the kibosh on it because with everything else happening with coronavirus, it's likely that this will never even make it into the news headlines. And that's exactly what happened. We haven't really heard any of the major media uh, organizations uh, talking about this at all, not ABC, NBC, CBS, or anything else. And if there is any mention of it at the New York Times or Washington Post, it's going to be a simple little, you know, uh, little statement somewhere at the back of the paper. They really don't want to talk about this because <clears throat> it's a really big deal and it's usually embarrassing. And uh, so anyway, I just thought it was very curious, the timing uh, that they did this. And I think that they looked at the situation and said, well, you know, we're going to be facing a lot of embarrassment. I think they probably have known this for a very long time. It's just that they, they, they knew at any time when they, when they came out and made the statement or pulled this case, pulled back on this case, that they were going to take a beating and, and were going to be made to look bad. And uh, so I think that uh, this is just an opportunity that came along and they said, hey, now's the time to do this because it won't get any news coverage. So I think that explains why they pulled back on this case now. So... Um, yeah, so that's basically the long and short of it. Just pretty much uh, my last thought on this subject, I guess, unless something else comes up about it. But um, so I've been talking about this now for three days because, again, this was, uh, I mean, this was a major deal at one point. Now it's just, it's a nothing. It just disappears into the ether as if it doesn't matter. But it does matter. Because it was a big part of justifying a $35 million investigation that took over two years. It likely had a lot to do with why the Democrats were able to win the House in 2018. It, 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 it literally nearly destroyed the lives of dozens of people around Trump and, and, and elsewhere and abroad. Uh, it was, I mean, this was a major deal. And now it just disappears as if it meant nothing. And I just don't want to let it go. I don't want to let this thing just go away and not point out how big of a deal this is. Because I remember how big of a deal it was at the time when they were using it to justify all that they were doing. And I really hope, now I'm sure uh, Mr. Durham, uh, I'm sure this didn't go past him. He certainly is aware of it, uh, being affiliated with the Department of Justice, certainly would have known about it. Um, certainly does know about it. <clears throat> and at this point, if you're John Durham and you're looking at this thing and this investigation, uh, in the big picture, and you scratch your head and go, wait a minute. So the whole Russian troll thing, the whole Russian troll farm conquered management thing uh, is a bust. They knew there was no Trump Russia collusion. They knew Flynn wasn't an agent of the Russians. They knew Cohen wasn't involved in anything, uh, that he was never in Prague. Uh, they, they, they knew that Carter Page was not any type of an asset for Russia. In fact, he was an informant for the FBI, CIA. And now we find out all these other things. Uh, you know, this has to be going through Durham's mind. 
because he's directly involved in this investigation of the investigation. And the investigation was based largely on those two things. And the third thing being this, uh, this again, this false narrative that the uh, Russians somehow hacked the DNC uh, to uh, supposedly get, supposedly they were trying to get <clears throat> opposition research that had been done on Trump. <laughs> as if they needed, as if the Russians needed to hack the DNC to get opposition research on Trump. I mean, the Russian intelligence agencies are perfectly capable of getting plenty of intelligence on Trump. He's a very public person. So the whole, the whole point of it was crazy. And this is the only thing that's left halfway standing. And it, it, even this is now on shaky ground. We've just had stories come out in the last two weeks that uh, CrowdStrike backing away from it again, as they always have. And now they're being more specific, saying, hey, we never said anything to the government uh, suggesting that we thought that the... or, had any, or We never discovered anything uh, that we did that suggested that, that uh, the hacked or stolen or whatever emails were given to WikiLeaks. We don't have anything to do with that. The only thing we did was go in and put uh, install some software on the DNC computer to see if there were, you know, uh, visitors uh, in the network that weren't supposed to be there. That's all we did. <laughs> we never had anything to do with suggesting that, uh, that these emails were given to WikiLeaks on behalf of the Russians or anything like that. That was never anything that we ever said. <clears throat> so who did say it and where did that come from? So there's a lot of things unraveling, and I'm just saying that Durham, it should at some point dawn on him, uh, now that the second narrative has been blown up, that just maybe, just maybe, the third narrative is probably a hoax too. And I'm sure it's going to come out, I mean, whether it comes out through his investigation, or whether it just comes out through, you know, the natural order of things over the next uh, couple of weeks or months, <clears throat> it will eventually be known that the third pillar of the entire Russia hoax has uh, been destroyed. And at that point, we're left with, okay, okay, then if none of those things were actually true, and they were all hoaxes and false narratives, then who's responsible for all that? And what are we going to do about it? And that's where Mr. Durham comes in, and Attorney General Barr, and the President. That's why... The guilty must be brought to justice. That is why, right there, in a nutshell. So as Durham is going through this investigation, it's not just a matter of going through and finding whether or not some, some, some rogue agents at the FBI, some crooked people at the DOJ, and some shifty people over to CIA, and some of their buddies uh, were involved in some shenanigans. It's a lot more than that. It's a lot more than that. And I certainly hope this will dawn on him and uh, give him a different perspective of exactly what he's looking into. It was, in fact, a coup. And it did involve massive lies. These were not mistakes. This was not oversight. This was not forgetting to cross a few T's or dot a few I's. This was not a few uh, errors in... Um, not understanding of uh, whether or not things were violations. This was not because there's not enough rules in place at the FBI and DOJ uh, and how to handle matters of this nature. Uh, it's not an issue of, oh, we just weren't communicating very well. It's not any of these things. It was a premeditated crime which involved massive conspiracies. It involved lying making up false narratives. And all of these people were a part of it. And especially Uncle Bob, the executioner, and the Hillary donor posse. And I don't see how, if you're Durham, how you can be in, in this investigation uh, and see the Mueller investigation as not being a part of this overall thing. Of course it was. It's just a matter of time. The truth is going to come out, certainly. Mostly, it's mostly out now. 
Trump's not going to let them forget about this. Me, many, uh, me and many other YouTubers are not going to let them forget about this. This is not going to go away quietly. We're not going to let this go away quietly. Trump's not going to let it go away quietly. Uh, I'm not going to. Most of you are not going to. No, we're not. Nope, this is not going to go away quietly. No way. These people must be punished. This was a big effing deal. A big deal. The biggest political scandal in our entire history. Not to be taken lightly. These criminals must be held accountable, period. I will not settle for anything less. I certainly hope Mr. Durham understands the seriousness of this uh, investigation he's doing. We're going to find out in the not-too-distant future. Trump certainly understands it. And he's always said if he has to get involved, he damn sure will. And he may have to. Let's hope not. Let's hope he trusts Barr and he trusts Durham. And uh, hopefully he's right in his instincts. But if he's wrong, I think he will make a move. I, I, I honestly do. I don't think he's going to let this thing slide. And he shouldn't. He can't. He cannot. Because if they get away with this, just imagine what they'll do next. And I've been saying this for so many years. This is the reason why. When I was really, really studying the Kennedy assassination. And I would talk to people about it. And they would sometimes say, man, why do you, why do you, why do you care, dude? I mean, that was like, I mean, like 50 years ago. Everyone's forgotten about it. Why does it matter? Who cares? I mean, yeah, he got his brains blown out. Maybe he deserved it. Uh, you know, he was, uh, he was putting the, the, the country uh, in danger by wanting to have uh, detente with the Soviet Union. Uh, he... He messed up the Bay of Pigs. Uh, he was gonna do this and do that. Uh, he was, he was, you know. He, people would give me all these these reasons why, you know, to, to justify why I should not be uh, interested in the Kennedy assassination. Why I should, why I should not bother talking about it. They should let it go. And what I would always say is, well, you know, we'll just think about what happened here. If rogue agencies of the government. Uh, were involved in an assassination of an American president that was a coup. And if they got away with that, and they continue to get away with that, imagine what other things they will do. And then you get things like 9-11, and you get many other things. And these people will only collect and gain more power as they gain more technology, and as they gain more ability to do a lot of things uh, that if they wanted to frame you up, destroy your life, they could do it. And so now here we are with this uh, Mueller witch hunt and look at what they did. They used these agencies to destroy innocent people's lives. They attempted a coup d'etat and who knows what links that they would be willing to go to next. That's why this has to be dealt with. We need to put a stop to it. And I would say abolish the damn CIA and all those intelligence agencies. I would turn intelligence gathering over to the military. And uh, that way they actually answer to the commander-in-chief. I would get rid of all these private uh, intelligence organizations, which is what they are. I would get rid of them. I would turn intelligence gathering over to the military. That's what we should be doing, gathering intelligence. That's not what the CIA does. Yes, they do in some part gather intelligence. But a lot of what they do is other types of things you know, that is not just gathering intelligence. They're actually getting involved in um, operations, overthrowing governments, assassinating uh, foreign leaders, assassinating unpopular people, assassinating people who may have information that could be damaging to the government, to shining some light of truth on some, some wrongdoing. They're engaged in all sorts of things. I mean, the CIA, I mean, it's just, it's out of control. The entire intelligence apparatus is out of control. I think it should be abolished. We've seen too much. <clears throat> we have seen way too much. And the idea that you're going to come up with some new rules or guidelines is not going to change a thing. <clears throat> because they can always find a way to get around it. <clears throat> it's just the facts. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's why... 
when the Senate passed this FISA bill, and I hope the president doesn't sign it. And I hear him go on TV and say, well, you know, we, we need the FISA court. Uh, we need the FISA. We need these tools to get the terrorists. And uh, no, no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't either. Nope, no, you don't. The president has complete authority to launch surveillance on anyone he wants. He doesn't need the FISA court. It's all a hoax. So I just wanted to put that in perspective today. Make sure, because it may be the last time we talk about it. How big of a deal this was, and how big of a deal it still is, and why I hope Durham is paying very close attention. Because I certainly am, so are a lot of other people. Well, you know, this uh, hack reporter, uh, CNN, of course, he, I refer to him now as the hack reporter, uh, Manu Raju, I think his name is, over at CNN, uh, he's the same reporter that uh, Sally, Mc, what's her name, senator in Arizona, uh, called him a hack. <laughs> same guy. Uh, same guy um, goes up to Bernie uh, at a press conference and asks Bernie about his future plans. Now, this is the morning after, this is yesterday, the morning after he got his ass kicked in the third big primary day, and obviously Bernie not in a very good mood. <laughs> so this guy, this hack, uh, Manu Raju, uh, ask Bernie about his future plans for his campaign. And of course, Bernie, obviously kind of grumpy, not having a good day after what happened last night, looks at, looks at Raju and says, quote, I'm dealing with a effing global crisis. You know, we're dealing with. <laughs> yes, snapped back at Raju, dealing with an effing global crisis. <laughs> so, um, yes, um, Commie Bernie, not very happy, kind of on the grumpy side. Uh, it's the third consecutive uh, uh, primary day that he's gotten his ass just literally kicked. There's no real reason for him to stay in other than what I have said before and probably what other people are telling me. Hey, you think Joe Biden can go the next four months without doing something literally crazy, saying something crazy or doing something crazy? I don't know if he can. If I'm a betting man, I think it's 50-50. I mean, you can't hide the guy. He's, he's, he's the potential Democratic nominee for president. You can't hide him. He's going to be out there with a microphone and a camera in front of his face. And he's going to be saying crazy things because he's not going to be getting better. He's going to be getting worse. Uh, dementia is a progressive disease. And he's capable of saying anything and doing anything. So I understand why Bernie would want to stick around. But from a position of him getting delegates... I mean, he's out, of, he's out of the delegate fight, really. It's not going to happen. There aren't enough large states where Bernie can have wins which will ever allow him to catch Biden. Biden's up now by well over 200, 250, point, 250 delegates now. There's no way Bernie could catch him unless Biden quit. Uh, and even then, Biden would give his delegates to someone else. So I see no path forward, but... I wouldn't be surprised uh, if Bernie doesn't drop out, but then again, I wouldn't be surprised if he does. I mean, he can stick around and raise some more money. There's still plenty of uh, commie Bernie supporters out there willing to give him money. I mean, as long as they're willing to give him money, I mean, he gets to pocket most of it. Why wouldn't he? It's easy money for commie Bernie, and of course, he is working on his retirement plan. If there's enough suckers out there willing to still give the guy money when he obviously has no, cl no chance, uh, you know, I mean... Uh, so, anyway, there's more to talk about once Bernie leaves the race. I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to wait for him to leave the race before I summarize the, the whole experience, the whole commie Bernie experience, uh, part two. So, anyway, yeah, Bernie uh, going off on uh, CNN hack reporter M Manu Raju. Uh, and, again, uh, he did say in that little presser that he gave that he is currently reassessing his campaign. <laughs> yeah, you might say you're reassessing your campaign. You have zero chance of, uh, of, of getting the delegates. Even if Biden were to drop dead tomorrow, he, uh, they would award his delegates to someone else, and it wouldn't be commie Bernie. So he knows he's done. Uh, we'll see if he sticks around. <clears throat> of course, at the same time, Trump, uh, Trump did clinch the GOP nomination, and simultaneously, Bill Weld dropped out. Now, if you walked up on the street to 100 people and asked them who Bill Weld is, I bet you 100% that not a single one could tell you. If you ask 100 people who Bill Weld is, 100 people, they could not tell you. 
who Bill Weld is. So he did drop out, and of course Trump clinches the GOP nomination in grand fashion. I think it may be one of the earliest uh, times that a uh, Republican president has clinched the nomination. How fast. And uh, with incredible numbers that he put up, the fact that he was running practically unopposed, uh, that he put up the numbers he did, it's just extraordinary. And he's, despite uh, the fact that he's getting beat on every day, uh, he is still uh, leading by uh, a good percentage in quite a few of the key states, Iowa and Florida to be specific. Um, so it's all looking good. And again, I do believe that uh, once we get through this pandemic, hopefully sooner than later, this is going to be Trump's finest hour. He's going to benefit from it greatly. Um, so let me move on to a couple more things because I'll kind of tail back into that here in just a second. Uh, let's see. We have, uh, of course, uh, quid pro quo Joe uh, and Bernie both uh, demanding that Trump invoke the Defense Production Act. Uh, and, of course, uh, they said this. Biden said it minutes after Trump had already done it. So obviously someone told Biden, hey, Trump just did this. And, he, and he's, oh, man, I, you know, so why he would tweet out Trump should do it after Trump had just done it, you can only know what's going on in quid pro quo Joe's crazy mind. But Bernie actually mentioned this a couple days ago. And a, a lot of people have been talking about this and knew it was going to be done probably before the end of the week. It's just a, it's, it's a, it's a step you're going to take in the natural progression of things. And uh, this gives Trump a great amount of power. And uh, so it just shows you that a lot of the things, a lot of the leftists in the media, uh, in Hollywood, uh, in Congress, a lot of what they've been saying about Trump, they don't really believe. They know it's total BS about him being a Hitler-esque type dictator and all this kind of stuff. Because you would never, ever uh, want to give a true Hitler-esque type dictator president the type of power that he is granted under the Defense Production Act. It basically allows the president to do a lot of things. <laughs> uh, you can go Google it for yourself and see. I mean, he can, it basically makes him, it basically makes him a dictator if he wants to be. He can, he don't need Congress to, to do a lot of things that he can do under Defense Production Act. He can, he can force every manufacturer in the country to start making, you know, things for the military or, in this case, things to uh, help out this uh, pandemic. <clears throat> he can <clears throat> demand the, <clears throat> excuse me, the issuance of money. He can intervene in legal cases. He can basically do practically anything. There's a lot of things that fall under this. It makes the president almost dictatorial. So you would never want to give those types of powers to someone who you truly believed was Hitler-esque. But yet we have all these Democrats even in Congress saying you need to do this, including Biden and Sanders. <clears throat> of course, it wouldn't be a typical day in this country without the rotten reverend tweeting out something. Again, this woman is just despicable. So she tweets out that... <clears throat> Calling this the Chinese virus is racist rhetoric. No, it's not racist rhetoric. It is a Chinese virus. It started in China. Because of these wet markets and wild animal markets that they have in China. And their horrible, horrible uh, hygiene. And their, uh, uh, you know, uh, hygiene and cleanliness are not things that are uh, Chinese are known for. Not talking about... Chinese people living in America running Chinese restaurants. I mean, I'm sure they keep the restaurants as clean as anyone else, but probably. I don't know. I'm just guessing. But if you see the photos that I have seen of these wild animal markets, these dead animal markets, these uh, wet markets, it's it's really hard to believe. I mean, it's a it would never be tolerated in any other country. Never. Uh, you'd never be able to get a permit. Uh, you look at these pictures. And it shows what appears to be like alleyways, but I'm sure their streets are just very narrow. And from one side of the street to the other, and all across, stacked up in very close proximity to one another, literally people jammed together going through these markets. They have every type of wild animal and dead animal or cooked animal or whatever in these markets. God knows how many diseases uh, going on there. And this stuff... I mean, it's just this many people and all those 
animals in that close proximity. I mean, you're begging for this type of stuff. That's why these viruses always come out of China, it seems like. <clears throat> Their hygiene and cleanliness standards are, it, it must be completely unregulated in China. And uh, they need to do something about these wet markets, these wild animal markets, because this is probably where a lot of this stuff comes from. Not just this flu, but many other flus uh, that we've seen. They get, you know, now that we live in a global situation, it's not like the old days when the Chinese just stayed in China. They're all over the world now. And the world goes to China. China is going to have to uh, catch up and leave the 15th century and join the rest of the world in cleanliness and hygiene standards. And they're going to have to, st the government of China is going to have to start uh, implementing it. And they've been told about this time and time again. This is not the first time. Um, they know this, and they've been hit on it before. And I think that when this is all over, they're going to pay a huge price because there's a lot of economies that are going to get wrecked. A lot of people are going to die. A lot of people are going to have their lives turned upside down. And there's going to be a lot of pissed off people when this all finally, right now, we can't focus on, on that. We have to focus on dealing with the situation. But when this is all passed, there's going to be a lot of people looking at China. And I wouldn't be surprised if there be lawsuits. Uh, they're going to get the blame for this. And they should get the blame for this. And the fact that the rotten Reverend Clinton would tweet this out shows, again, she is completely clueless. Completely clueless. Now, keep in mind, the Clintons have their own history with China. Just Google Charlie Tree. So, yes, the Clintons have their own history with China, but uh, for her to tweet out this comment shows how out of touch with reality she is. Everyone knows where this virus came from. Everyone knows uh, the type of damage it's going to do. And, you know, it. again, they've been told many times about the hygiene, about the cleanliness about the, these these wet markets, about these wild animal markets. They just refuse to ever do anything. I think now they're going to be forced to change that. And they're going to pay a heavy price for it in a lot of ways. Uh, a lot of ways. And um, so I, I think we just have to watch and see what happens here. But I, that's my prediction that that's, uh, that's likely going to happen. Uh, a lot of things are going to change. Uh, you know, so we'll just have to keep watching. But yes, once again, the rotten reverend just making an ass out of herself. It, it, the woman has no clue. I mean, she's... I've never seen such a, a person. She's, there's no self-awareness uh, with this woman whatsoever. She's completely devoid uh, of that. But anyway, let's move on. We're running out of time. Uh, just uh, something you might think about. If you run into a trucker uh, today, tomorrow, the next day, next time you see a trucker, you pass a trucker, give them a thumbs up. Because right now, it's truckers who are getting the shit kicked out of them. They're working ungodly amounts of hours uh, you know, the maximum that the law allows them to drive, 13 hours a day, I believe, at least in this in this state, the truckers are working their asses off to refill the stores, to do a great job. Truckers get a, a, a lot, take a lot of shit. Let's put it that way. They take a lot of shit. Uh, so you give a thumbs up and a smile to a trucker the next time you see one, they're doing a hell of a job. Um, the coronavirus has passed the Senate. It will move on to the president, and of course he will sign it. We are getting reports that uh, the coronavirus may have peaked in China and in South Korea. That's good news. Although, again, going back to the previous thing I was just talking about, China, and another reason that the rotten Reverend Clinton is an idiot is because, and the reason is there's no problem calling this the China virus, is because they didn't tell anyone for weeks. And when we offered to help them initially, they refused. There you go, Reverend. And, of course, uh, again, uh, something that was extraordinary. Uh, I talked to you yesterday about CNN, Dana Bash, uh, praising Trump. And uh, now we had yesterday, actually, Scarborough, Joe Scarborough, I mean, hates Trump, uh, the morning schmo, actually praising Trump and saying we have to get behind the president. We have to hope he succeeds because we all have to succeed. As I said yesterday, the, uh, the uh, resistance is over. The resistance is over. And there you're seeing the proof of it right there. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll be back tomorrow with more Towergate. Towergate, you guys uh, take care and be safe. Thank you. Bye.